Back in Excel Magic Trick 1528, we saw how to create a dynamic array cross-tabulated report with totals. That means if I change one of the inputs for the row header variable, change it to customer, instantly our report updates. Change the column variable to product, the cross-tab report instantly updates. Now here's the formula, oh my heavens. Now I posted the video about this formula here back two years ago. And since then, the let function has come out, which allows us to take repeated elements in a formula, define it as a variable, and therefore the formula will only calculate that one time instead of one, two, three, four, many times throughout the formula leading, of course, to more efficient formulas. Now, this video was inspired by Carlos Barbosa. He made this post at LinkedIn, and in the comments below, they're like, but what about let? So in this video, we want to see how to create this formula and the row variable and column variable formulas. We start off in the cells with our row and column variables. Highlight, go up to Data, Data Tools, Data Validation. From the allow, I want list. In the source, I want field names. Click OK. Now down here, I want a label. So I say equals the row variable. This is a text formula, so I use ampersand, double quotes, forward slash, double quotes, and ampersand. So I create that label. And so when I select something here to extract unique lists for the row and column header, I'll also have a label that is dynamic. Now for the row headers, equals sort, unique, uh-oh. But if that's going to be a variable that can be any one of these four columns, that means I need to look up the column based on that lookup variable. So we can use xlookup. We're going to look up customer, comma, the lookup array, field names, notice four columns, comma, and in the return array, Instead of just a parallel range with exactly four columns in one row, when we highlight four columns in many rows, XLOOKUP knows when it finds a match for customer to deliver all the rows. Now, this sort of looking up a column is something we did throughout Excel history with index, but XLOOKUP does it quite easily. Close parentheses, close, close, control enter. And if we change this, to product, everything's working. Now the problem is I need the word total at the bottom. So in the top cell, I'm actually, as our variable, going to define just the unique list. Let Alt Enter to give us a line break. And so the name, we'll call it something like row variable unique list. And there's our first variable. I come to the end, comma, Alt Enter. And now we want to count however many unique items we have, comma. And we could use count. I like to use rows. That simply counts however many rows are in that unique list, comma, Alt Enter. And for this argument, this is where we're going to make our calculation or formula. And what we need to do is check. Right now, there are four unique products in four different rows. But I need to check if it's the fifth row and put the word total. So we'll use the if function. And we need an array of 1 to 5. So we use sequence. And how many rows do we want in that sequence? That count plus 1, close parentheses. Now, one thing that is really annoying about let and variables, watch what happens when I hit the F9 key. We can't evaluate variables in our let formula, which makes it really hard to see what's going on. Control Z, but we'll trust that that's working. Now we want to check if that is greater than Control V, the count. If that's true, then we want the word total in double quotes. Otherwise, we want this, but sorted. Close parentheses, close, close, Control, Enter. And that is amazing. If I change this to 
customer. I get my sorted unique list with the word total. The let formula to define our column variables is very similar to our row formula. For XLOOKUP, we're looking up that variable there. And then we count that unique list. We also have to transpose. So I did transpose and sort on the unique list created from the first variable. And then in sequence, instead of doing rows, we do columns. There's our word total. And there's the transposed unique list. So when we enter that, there's region and total. If I change this to product, just like that, it's working. For the first five variables in let, we're going to have our records, which are these four columns. The variable for field names. We need the full revenue column. We need our unique list from the rows as a spilled array, including the word total. Notice it's referring to J7. That's where the array formula lives. Pound means get everything spilled from that cell. And we'll do that for our column variable. Now I need to count how many items are in this unique list. So I'll put count control V. That's the name of the variable. And you could use count a, which counts rows or columns. It counts not empty cells, but I'm going to use rows. So it'll count rows there, comma, alt enter. And we'll take that, count control V. And this one's spanning columns, so I'm going to use columns. Again, you can use count a if you'd like, comma, alt enter. Now, one problem we saw earlier is if I highlight this, and I just want to verify that it gives me a count of 5, if I hit F9, I get a name error. Well, here's one way as you build your formula, you can try and get around that. If I, as I build each variable, just test it for a moment. So I'm going to put this as a calculation, Control V, close parenthesis. I can check as I'm going along each variable. F2, delete. Now I need to look up, based on these two inputs, the correct column. So look up column for row variable, comma, x lookup. There's the lookup value, comma. We're going to look it up from the variable field names, comma. Retrieve it from records, close parentheses. And we could do our same trick, control C comma, control V. And then when I enter, that looks up the whole column, F2. And I don't need any of that. And if I copy this, and I'm not looking up row variable, column, and I'm going to use that input. And you can test it if you want. And that's all nine variables we need for this formula. Alt, Enter. This is the argument where we're going to create our calculation. Now, here's a cool trick. Sometimes when I'm working on a long let like this, and I just want to keep the variables, I put a 1, close parentheses, and then Save. Now, our goal is first to get the totals in this column. But remember, they come from the row header variable. Then we're going to get the totals along the bottom based on the column variables. Then we'll do the two-way sumifs formula based on column and row variable, F2. All right, backspace, backspace. We're first going to start off with sequence, comma, and we want to generate 1 to 5. So count, column, unique list. And we're going to ask the question, are you greater than Control v minus 1? Now let's just close parentheses and see what this gives us. The numbers 1 to 5, there is only one number greater than 4. And that's where we want our total for all the customers. And also notice that this is spilled across the columns. F2, we're going to use that as our logical test. If, backspace, comma, value of true is where we want to add using some ifs. Revenue column, revenue column variable, comma, we need to look up the whole column for our row variable. Look up column for row variable, comma. And then the criteria, we're actually going to do a function argument array operation with all of these items, including total. So there it is. Criteria 1, row unique list. 
close parentheses. And very importantly, in terms of array operations, this will deliver items down across the rows, which are the totals we want. The first part of logical test, as we saw, delivers items across the columns. When we evaluate across totals for these and trues and falses this way, we'll get a rectangular range. And that is what we want. Close parentheses, close, and Control-Enter. That is beautiful. Those are the totals just for our customer. And we can even test this right now. Sales rep, pretty amazing. Now we want to put the totals at the bottom, F2. At the end, backspace, backspace, and then we want a comma. And we have to repeat the entire formula we have here, but based on the column variables. If sequence, we need to spill these down the rows. Count row unique list, close parentheses, and we're going to say, are you greater than Control V minus 1? That'll give us an array of trues and falses this way, where the only one that is true is the last row, comma, sum ifs, revenue column, comma, criteria range is looking up the column variable column, comma, and then the function argument array operation is our unique list of column variables. Close parentheses, close on the first if, then the second if, and finally let. Control Enter. That is absolutely beautiful. Those are the totals for the product. If I change this to region, those are the new totals. Now we need to fill in the middle part, which is a two-way sum ifs. Now I'm going to have to backspace and watch my screen tips really carefully, because this is the if I want. Value if true. Not the first if, but the second if. Comma, and we use sum ifs. Revenue column, look up whole column for column variable, criteria 1, column unique list, and now we need to do it for the row variable. Control V, look up column for row variable, and finally the criteria, our function argument array operation, the unique list from the row. So that's the third sum ifs, close parentheses, close on if, close on if, and let. Control Enter. Wow, all we have left is the grand total. Now, in 1528, we actually did a more complicated way of getting the total here than I'm going to do here. Notice it says total and total. And those are spilled arrays from that cell on this one. If I join these two together and say which one of you cells is equal to total total, that'll give us only that cell. So F2, right at the beginning, if. There's the logical test. Very carefully, I took the two unique lists and joined them together. And now we say, are any of you equal to, in double quotes, total, total? If that's true, then please sum the entire revenue column, close parentheses. And there we have value of true and value if false. We come to the end, close parentheses, and you're not going to believe it when I control enter. That is amazing. Now I have a completely dynamic cross tabulated report based on whatever I put in to the two variables at the top. I also added some conditional formatting with the logical test being when the cell is not empty, then please add some formatting. Now, of course, a pivot table is much easier. And of course, that's how we do it most of the time. But when you need something to instantly respond to variables being changed, spill dynamic arrays, and the new let formula can make what was impossible in the past Excel now possible. All right, if you like that video, click that thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel is Fun. And if you want to see more videos about dynamic arrays or the let function, check out these videos.